You're listening to Pole Parlor, a fun, inspiring podcast for all those bewitched by pole dance. Each week, your Madam Crimson Minx has candid conversation with unique, engaging individuals from within and around the pole dance community. Pole Parlor is passionate about preaching creativity, soulful sensuality, and empowerment through pole dance. You know how we do. Welcome everyone to Pole Parlor. This is episode 50, Shay Williamson. I'm your host, Crimson Minx. This week on the podcast, we have the sweet and ambitious Utah pole babe, Shay Williamson. On this episode, we talk about how Shay's mom was responsible for first introducing her to pole dance, how she has capitalized on the unique opportunity of living in a small town in Utah to create a multifaceted career as a full-time pole and aerial professional, her experience and passion for competing in pole competitions around the country, and how she's managed to create and run her own Aerial Olympics pole dance competition in her hometown. Also, don't forget to check out Shay's post-podcast interview on the blog at poleparlor.com where she shares her favorite photos, music, video, and more. And let's hang out after the episode as well. You can find me as Crimson Minx on Facebook and as Pole Parlor everywhere else, including Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, and Pinterest. So now, let's bring on Shay. They sent me away to find them a fortune, a chest filled with diamonds and gold. Welcome, Shay Williamson, to the Pole Parlor Podcast. How are you today? Good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm doing well, and you're welcome. Thank you for coming on and talking with us today. I'm so excited. Oh, good. Well, let's start off with the same question we ask everyone. For how long have you been pole dancing, and how did you first discover pole dance? So it's the best story ever of how I first started pole dancing. I had just moved back to Utah um, to be closer to family. And my mom, of all the people, said, I got a group on to pole dancing class. Come with me. And I was, like, very confused but so excited. (laughs) And so my mom introduced me to pole dancing. And that was almost five years ago. Wow. So many people... We, I think the pole industry has to thank Groupon and LifeBooker and all of whatever those, those deal sites are. At, at that moment in time, like I'd say like three to six years ago when they were major, so many people discovered right. pole dance that way. Right, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how effective it is anymore, but um, at that time, man, that's how I'd learned about it too. Right, yeah. Not my favorite now, but no. definitely grateful for it then. Yeah, because you're a studio owner, and so you've seen the, the opposite side of it, and it's been an interesting <laughs> decline, but... Right. Are you a full-time pole aerial professional? I am. I am. I'm a performer and a teacher, and I own the two studios, so and what this the is what I live and breathe. That's amazing. What are the name of your studios, and where are they located? My studios are called Kairos Fitness, cool. and they're both located in Utah, um, in northern Utah, one in Ogden and one in a city called Syracuse. Wow. What is the pole scene like in Utah? I have never been to Utah. I hear it's beautiful, you- and I hear that pole is actually really good there. So. so the pole scene in Utah is really rad because most young women or men or whoever have a dance history. Dance is huge in Utah. So they grow out of traditional dance, and then they find the circus, which is so cool. Um, It's also a very small community. So there are maybe four studios in the whole state, and we all just are a big family. Yeah, because it's not a very densely populated state, correct? So do people kind of have to drive a little further to get to you maybe, but... Right. There's one main highway through the state and all of the studios are somewhere near that highway. So yeah, there's a little bit of driving, but totally worth it. That's awesome. So what's your history in dance then? So I grew up with all forms of dance. I was mainly a ballet dance, but I did competitive jazz and hip hop and lyrical and all of that through high school. Why is Utah a dance state? Just out of curiosity. Is that... 
you know, I don't know why Utah is <laughs> such a heavily populated dance state, but almost, I would say 90% of youth are involved in dance or cheer or tumbling along with their traditional sports or instead of their traditional sports. Oh, that's really weird. Okay, it's just a thing in Utah. We'll just have to accept that yeah. as the answer. And if anyone right. knows, they can comment. But um, yeah, that's cool. That's well, like a like feeder the, system for you. There's yeah, there's so many of the, what is it, like Dancing with the Stars and all of that. Yeah. So many of those girls have been from Utah. And so you think you can dance. So many of those girls are from Utah. Wow. Okay, so you, dance dance history, went somewhere, presumably off to college or something, came back to Utah. Right. Right. Yep. And, and then where did you start pole dancing? Because your pole studio didn't exist. So you said there's only a few in the state. So did you have to right. kind of go far? You know, I actually live very close to the studio that I started at. It was like seven miles away from my house. Um, and it's actually this building that we're in right now that I'm in right now. Um, so the studio was called French Kiss Fitness. Oh, that's cute. And yeah, it doesn't exist anymore, obviously. Um, and so I started taking classes there, and then I became a teacher within six months. Oh, wow. And then she was ready to move on to a different project, so I bought her client list and was able to keep the current clientele that she had in a studio that I started myself. Oh, my gosh. Does your mom still pull dance? She doesn't pole dance as much anymore. Um, she is a personal trainer and she teaches fitness at my studio though. Oh my gosh, that's really cool, wow. Okay, yeah. so can we talk about, cause I know you compete and perform and all of that. So like, what was that journey like from starting to teaching to then opening the studio while also learning how to compete and all of that? Yeah, the first year of owning a studio and becoming a competitor outside of my home state was crazy. It was a lot of learning, a lot of mistake making for sure. Um, it was nuts, though. I think um, I I love being a competitor and I love being a performer, but it it's very different outside of your home state when you don't know people and you're trying to learn things so you can take it back home for your own business. I would say it was a huge learning experience. What, like, like what, like what's an example of something that's different competing in Utah versus say, if you're going to, where, where else do you compete outside? You've only been in the U S or international as well. I haven't gotten to go international yet, but I would love to. So only the U S. Cool. Um, so how's it different? I think it's different because you don't know anybody. Okay. And you, don't, and you don't know the local studios as well, and you don't really know, as a first time out of state performer, you don't really know the protocol. You kind of get baptized by fire yes. in that. And I, I was going by myself, so I didn't have a coach to take me and say, here's where you sign up, here's how you act, here's what you do. I just had to watch and learn and quick. Wow, what year was your first competition? Oh God. Let me think, 2014, okay. I did a PSO in Seattle. Oh, wow. So you had all the Pacific Northwest people. Yes. I love pole sports organization. I me think, too. Yeah, it allows people to compete that otherwise wouldn't be able to, even though it's still a flight for some people. Right. Yeah. I love, I loved the experience and I've loved every experience I've had out of state. Um, especially now that I get to take and coach people under me, it, I try to take what I've learned and share it for sure. Yeah. Did you, were you relying on a lot of, since you said you didn't have a coach, were you just relying on a lot of online resources or just kind of emailing yes. people? Like how do you even... Yeah, I, I watched and I learned and I observed and I, I read a lot of forums and I followed like pole dancers that I knew were competitors and I just kind of learned by experiencing it, I think. Yeah, it sounds like that's a situation that is necessary for a lot of 
pockets, areas all over the world where there's not like fully developed programs and studios. Like, you know, when you live in the larger cities, you could just go, there's that pole star in every city and that, right. you know, and that developed program and studio. But you, it sounds like it was more of like a, a starting off pole fitness type of Absolutely. workout studio that you fell into and you, you had to grow it basically on your own, huh? Correct. Yeah, totally correct. Okay. So you started your studio. What was your intention other than just, or did you have like an ethos or something like that? Like what was your intention other than like, I want to have a place to train? So while one of my intentions was, I want to have a place (laughs) to train. um, There were so many wonderful students and people, and I just didn't want that to go away. I, I love the pole community and the aerial community so much that when I knew the studio was going to close, I, I did not want that to disappear. So that was my motivation, one of my motivations um, for opening the studio. But my, I feel like our, our studio has such a family feeling um, that it just would have been so sad to see that go away. Yeah. Um, and there was another part to that question. I'm sorry. What was that? Oh, uh, like what, what's the ethos of your studio? Like, yeah. do you have some type of like mission that you're on there? <laughs> <laughs> we always have a mission. Yeah. We um, should. So my, my whole goal for my studio was to make it all inclusive, totally nice. inclusive and everybody have a spot, whatever they need out of this community, whether they're a child, whether they're a male, whether they want to do sexy pole dance, whether they want to do contemporary pole dance, whether they only want to do like fitness, I don't care. I want everybody to have a spot here. So you and offer all those kinds of classes all in one yes, place? Wow. Yes, absolutely. Um, we totally have a kids program. We have co-ed exotic pole. We have women only exotic pole. We have pole fitness, pole art. We have aerial, a full aerial program, all of it. Oh my gosh. See, that's difficult to pull off. Do you, is, I'm guessing you have multiple rooms Yep. Both of my studios have three separate rooms. So there's a dance floor, a a pole room and an aerial room. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Because that's kind of something that's difficult to pull off if you're just working with, you know, a room with eight poles or something like that. Right. Yeah, definitely. I'm assuming, and this is definitely not to belittle your accomplishments, but I'm assuming that maybe it was easier for you to find larger real estate in Utah. So this was something that wasn't so like far-fetched as opposed to maybe someone trying to start a place in New York city where it's like, how can I find all of this space? (laughs) Oh yeah, totally. For sure. Um, no, not belittling at all. Definitely. I have a lot of opportunity for more space here and the demographic is totally different from New York or LA or something. So yeah, my, my environment has definitely helped me make that a possibility. That's awesome. And have you like had any issues with the males coming in or the kids coming in? Have you had to deal with any backlash from the community with your studio or has it been pretty cool? Um, there's always a little bit. Um, I would say that the kids program has been the most popular one I have to answer questions about. Okay. But I think I think overall we're pushing the children's program more for aerial and circus. Okay. So it's not quite as bad. Um, as far as men go, it's it's widely understood that if you're not going to participate yeah. in class, then you don't need to be here as an observer. So, so far, I feel very, very lucky that we haven't had to deal with a whole lot other than the normal, oh, your stripper gym comments, which is, yeah, cool, awesome. I'm a stripper gym, whatever. <laughs> You're missing out. Come to my stripper Thanks. gym. You'll see how awesome it is. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, there's a point where you just have to own it and brush that off and say, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> If you want me to teach you how to be a stripper, I will. If that's not what you want to learn, then I won't teach you that. Yes, we have exotic classes at this time. And if not, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And so, yeah, I wanted to speak with you because I know that you kind of split your time between pole and aerial. And so I feel like this is becoming a rising thing because obviously they go hand in hand. They're right. they're, they're, They're aerial apparatuses of some sort. So... When did you get into aerial? Was it around the same time? And how do you see them working together? So I started doing aerial about the same time I started taking pole class. Oh, wow. Um, I started with the aerial silks, and I thought that was going to be, like, my jam. Mm -hmm. But I fell in love with pole so fast that I still do train and teach in the aerial arts and perform in them. But I'm more of a 
pole girl at heart, but I definitely do love my aerial frame and the lira and the hammock and silks and all of that. Um, they, they are amazing together. I've done performances with multiple apparatus and my pole. And as far as Utah goes, getting hired for corporate jobs, the aerial is a necessity because not everybody wants pole. And the grip strength and the body coordination to cross train is incredible. Yeah, I think that it's it's smart when people cross train like that, especially professionals like yourself to to kind of like work those different muscle groups and also just for kind of like creative inspiration on moving on these different right. apparatus, right? For sure. Yeah, we were, we talked about that in the last podcast with Lisa D about the corporate um, reality of like sometimes they just don't want to hire a pole or sometimes there's just that issue that you can't install a pole, you know? Right. So right. is there like a lot of corporate gigs in Utah? And like, how do you even make these happen? Because I'm assuming this is going to be a large part of your kind of income to, to make all of this balance and work, right? Yeah, definitely. So I'm really lucky to work with a production company that has um, – their hands in a lot of places like that and deals with a lot of corporate events. And um, just through through that, I do a lot of aerial and pole work. And then also just through word of mouth, people will see my social media or something like that and inquire about that. That's cool. Yeah, I think that's an option for people out there who are interested is to reach out to these production and event companies because, right. you know, they, maybe not, they may not even have thought in that direction, but you could inspire them to create, right. you know, a whole new live yeah. experience revolving around you. So yeah. And people love it. People think that silks and Lyra are the most amazing and incredible <laughs> thing they've ever seen. So, and it truly is. So it's awesome to involve with a corporate job and they just think that an invert is the best thing that's ever happened. I know. Or the layback, mind's flown. Right. And it's nice to get paid. And I mean, that's the goal, right? Yeah. Getting paid. Yeah. How do you, what is like your, you know, I'm not asking like, tell me how much money you make. But honestly, as a full time pole professional, what, like, what are all the things that come into you, your career? You perform, you have a studio, like, what else is all in there? So, yeah, as in like my whole life encompass, right? Yeah, what does your pole, what does being a pole professional encompass, and I guess aerial professional encompass for you? What are all the different things you do that <laughs> kind of make up your career? Um, lots of training and lots of temper tantrums. I think it's like 70% temper tantrum. <laughs> About being, oh, and like, no, maybe like, 70% temper tantrum and 20% soreness. Yeah, yeah, recovering. Right, and you know, um, that, that actual performance part is such a small part of it, but that's where the payoff is. So there's training time, there's insurance cost and, and cost of equipment and sacrifices you make elsewhere so that you can get to that performance spot. Do you feel like you need to compete to to maintain your, your spot in the professional pole world? I think now, absolutely. Okay. Because it's becoming, it's starting to hit that mainstream. So I think competing is an important part of it. And competing also helps you grow as a performer. Yeah, that's true. And you do, so you do performances, corporate performances, you do competitions, you own a studio. During this time, you're training. Yes. Did I cover everything? There's there's one other thing. Yeah. I also own a really awesome grip aid company that yeah. ships all over the world. Let's talk about it. Dew point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love Dew Point. So I actually um, have owned it for just over a year and it's growing like crazy. Yeah. So tell us what is Dew Point? Dew Point is a natural moisturizing grip aid for your whole body. So it's good for aerialists, for pole dancers, for um, anybody, for sunburns, for tattoos, for whatever you want, static cling in your hair. Um, it's chemical free and it is a moisturizer for your skin, but it also helps you grip to your apparatus. Okay, because I have a really bad habit of just spraying myself with firm grip because I'm disgusting. And I feel like <laughs> I always say, 
give myself my cancer spray, and I know it's bad, and I probably don't need to spray my whole body with it. Um, but I get really sweaty, so I, it sounds like dew point w- is really what I should be using on my body yes, and save absolutely. it for my hands. <laughs> Correct. I 100% agree with you on that. <laughs> so how did you develop the formula? I wish I could take credit for developing the formula okay. for dew point. Um, I purchased it from a wonderful woman and friend of mine named Paula uh, just over a year ago. Cool. And she actually developed it. She she works with amazing natural skin uh, lotions and soaps and, and facial formulas. And she has a whole thing that she does with that. She had a friend who was a pole dancer and who had terrible allergies yeah. to the chemicals. So she just said, I need a lotion for my skin that's not going to make me break out. And I think it just happened to be that she was like, if you could make this a little stickier, this would be perfect for the pole. And the way she tells it just from there, it was just like wildfire. Uh, Bad Kitty has been a huge, huge um, supporter and helper in making Dew Point grow. They picked it up and just support it 100%. And um, from there, we've been picked up by Xpole and uh, Pull More and Mighty Grip and lots of other amazing, amazing companies distribute it for us. And it just, it was just a gift from the universe, I think. So I was her, one of her sponsored athletes and I did some of her social media marketing. Okay. And she just decided that it was time for her to move on to a different project. And so I, I love it so much. I love the product so much and I believe in it so much that I, I took over and it's now my baby. That's awesome. I know it sounds silly of like me like talking to you about lotion, but it's no. I mean, it's my it's, favorite subject. It's it's part of our reality, guys. You know. So, and I don't know why. I've been pulling for over four years, and I still like haven't found like a good lotion that I like. So, um, it's uh, really your new excited. favorite lotion is Dew Point Light Formula. Okay. The light formula you can put on after your shower. You can put on before bed and you won't stick to your bed sheets. You can put it on your hands. I like the sticky stuff. I'm sweaty, so. uh, I I love the sticky stuff, too. I want heavy. I want dew point heavy. (laughs) Ultra. You're an ultra girl. Exactly. Well, that's so cool because, like, with your studio and with dew point, like, it sounds like you just kind of fell into things that you were so passionate about and were really willing to take the risk to take them on because, I mean, taking on a business, that's a, that's a huge challenge. Right. Yeah. I was very lucky. Um, and I was in the right place at the right time for a lot of things, but I definitely have had to put in the work to make it grow and stay successful for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put links to all of it in the show notes. So thank you. Yeah. So people could check that out. And I have to add, this is not all that you do. Because you also have your own aerial and pole competition. Yeah. So, I'm an overachiever, maybe. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you just kind of, to, to be a professional in this world, you have to balance a lot of things. And that's why I was so excited to have you on, because I'm like, man, there's a way to make this your career. And I think it just involves balancing a lot of things. But Shay can totally prove that it's doable. So, like. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So you have um, Aerial Olympics. Aerial Olympics, yes. Okay. My other favorite thing. Yeah, how long have you had this for? So this coming Aerial Olympics will be the fourth year running. Okay. So every year I've owned my studio, we have had an Aerial Olympics. That's cool. It's not at your studio though, right? No, it's not. It has moved bigger than my studio. It started out as a studio competition, and now we've got people coming to compete in it from all over the Mountain West. Okay. Um, so it's at, a, it's at a local theater in Salt Lake City. That's cool, and it's pull and aerial. Pull and aerial, and I took a little inspiration from the amazing PSO, and I have made it all levels. So again, giving people the opportunity to be on stage that wouldn't necessarily always have that choice, um, but including all aerial apparatus. That's cool. And so is it a, um, an open submission type thing? Are there any requirements or like, how do you even decide this? Was, was your concept with it more like your studio where you wanted to be super inclusive or is there like a larger theme for it? Um, it's, it's very similar to my studio. It's all inclusive. There are 
obviously level suggestions and we've kind of developed a breakdown so you know which which category to choose for yourself mm-hmm. but it's it's open registration and it's it's all inclusive that's cool so what levels do you have is it is there a professional level or is it more there is okay. yeah yeah so the professional level is called all star okay um just because i think the word professional has a different meaning okay you know, um, so we start with the novice level, which is going to be your more intro basic level. But I, I'm really funny with words and I don't like the word beginner Okay. because everybody's journey is different and yeah. you could be a novice, but be five years in. It's true. And I don't, I don't want that to discount on anybody's confidence. Yeah. So we have novice, we have intermediate, we have advanced, and then we have all-star level. Oh my gosh. And is it like the all stars at night and it's like a full day competition? Yeah. So it's two days. Um, and the, the all star is its own day. Well, now we've added an, a category this year. So the all star in our new category is the first evening and then the amateur divisions are the whole next day. What's the new category? It's the exotic pole division. It's happening. I'm telling you, it's happening everywhere. I'm People so are putting exotic in their competition. Yes. People I'm so excited. Yeah. Did you get yes. a good response to it? Oh my gosh. Yes. I was worried and I kind of waited a, a, a little longer, I think about a year longer than I wanted to just because of Utah and being the demographic that we are. I wanted people to have a little taste of what we do first. And yeah. this year is the year I was like, we're just going to go for it. And it's been so well received. Yeah, that seems to be people we've talked to in the past. It's kind of like, I have to show you what this is first because so you you don't have a fucking mental breakdown, like hearing a whole (laughs) competition at the non-pole. And then they see it and they're like, oh, this is awesome. And then it's like, yeah, and you know what? You could be sexy in it too. And it's kind of, in a lot of instances, it just has to be added a a couple of years later. Right. And lo and behold, to nobody's surprise, it's going to be one of the more popular divisions. Yeah. Isn't that so cool to hear that? Like it's, it's within the community. It's still favored and, and, but available to the athletic, non-sexy, non-erotic is also super popular and also accessible to people, but it's just nice. I'm not, I'm not trying to say like, I favor that, but it's so cool that there was no backlash and that people are really like willing to stand up for the historic roots, the sexy roots of pole at this point. Right. For people who are listening, who are not from the United States and may not know, Utah is a very um, like Mormon, religious, conservative conservative state. So um, it's a little different than pulling off a show um, of this type in, you know, Los Angeles or, you know, Florida or New York, or pe- you know, people we've talked to in those areas in the past. It's a bit. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a bit more conservative, a bit more um, hesitant for, for new things. But so far, it's been really well received. We've made some news appearances. We've done a lot of things. We've been out in the community so much that. While, yes, those comments are still around, it's, yeah. it's been very surprising how warm the welcome has been. And are you selling, because this is another issue that I know a lot of competitions and shows have, are you, are you finding that you're selling tickets to people outside the community or is, that still, is it still mostly um, participants and friends and family? Um, we, because we're marketing in it as a whole event, we do sell some tickets to non family members. Um, I would say that's a very small percentage still, yeah. but yeah. that would be my goal for sure. Um, outs- outside, if you will, people yeah. involved and to watch it so they can see and learn and become interested. Yeah. I mean, and that's just the reality of a competition too. Cause it's like, not like I'm going to go to, uh, a tap dance competition or like a bodybuilding competition if I don't do it. But you know, that's the difference between a competition and a show as well. And so drawing that distinction. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Good for you. What are some challenges of doing a competition like this? So like, I'm sure I can't like, did you just kind of figure it out having participated in so many competitions? Do you have an event company working with you or how are you pulling this off? Oh my gosh. So I always joke that I do everything wrong three times before I finally figure it out. So 
I hope this being the fourth year of the competition that it's just perfect and amazing and like wonderful and we all become millionaires for uh, it. I don't know. <laughs> don't consider no. yourself a failure if that doesn't happen. But <laughs> oh, okay, deal. Um, I yeah, I I modeled it after comp- the things I loved in competitions um, that I had participated in. I changed things that I didn't love. And I've got some really brilliant people that I can bounce things off of and I'm working with. And the rigging company that I work with is absolutely phenomenal. They build me a beautiful stage every year. Um, And I think a lot of it is honestly trial and error and uh, student feedback and challenging parts are that I'm so involved with the planning and the setup and the marketing and all of that. And also I'm training some people for this competition. Mm -hmm. So I have to then step back and be a coach and not be involved in the judging and, and other things. So I think the hardest part is just putting all those different hats on and balancing that appropriately. Yeah. Are you performing at all during it or no? Oh my gosh. That's the the big question every year. I don't know what to do. (laughs) Um, I think I might make an appearance this year, but typically I'm so busy running around yeah. and there's just no time and I look like a damn chicken with my head cut off. So we'll see. Oh, well, what, <laughs> well, if not at this one, what else are you still competing in or performing? Oh my goodness. Um, I am performing next weekend at the Utah Pride Festival. Oh, that's cool. That, uh, how did so, you get involved with that? Uh, with So that production company I work with, they're called yep. Voodoo Productions. They're amazing. Um, they're involved with it every year, and I am lucky enough to be one of their performers. I do get to do pole. I get to do sexy pole there, so that's super fun. Yeah. Uh, and then I will be competing at the North American Pole Dance Championships at the end of July, or I guess the beginning of July after that. So I'm still in the wow. competition circuit pretty heavily. I got a, I got a few things I got to work on you know, competition wise. Yeah. What's your goals? What's your trajectories with that? Well, you know, I, I kind of am a joke. I have a joke with myself. Um, I love third place. I'm like really awesome at getting (laughs) third place at competitions. Um, so I, I would love to improve for myself enough to, to make it into an international competition placement or not. I don't really care, but, um, I do have a goal. I want to get not third place once or twice just to see if I can. Sure. But, but I always, my goal for competition is just to perform and to grow and to not fall on my face. Yeah. Always good goals to have, but I yeah. mean, it's, it's the, the, the loftier something to reach towards is always good too. Of course, you know, we always right. say like you should compete for yourself and you should compete right. to, and be happy with your performance. And I think right. that's number one, but I Perfect. also think there's nothing wrong with wanting to do well at, at the same time. I agree. And, and I, I, it is a joke amongst my friends and my studio that I always get third place, but I'm like, you know, one day I'm going to surprise everybody and pull in a nice solid second. No. Nah. One day first. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, you're still really young, Shay, in terms of competing. So, I mean, you have a lot of time ahead of you. Yeah. And And I love it. Yeah. If you like competing and it doesn't seem like this, it doesn't, a lot of people, it's like a necessary evil. It actually sounds like something you really enjoy doing. Right. I love it. And I love being with new people and meeting those people you follow on the internet and on Facebook and Instagram and seeing them in real life. And it's the competition circuit for me has been such a supportive and welcoming environment that there's no reason that I would want to quit doing it. I get to travel. I get to meet people. I get to perform. I get to hang out. And sometimes I get my name called on stage and sometimes I don't. It's cool. That's awesome. What's your favorite competition that you've ever done and why? Oh my gosh. Can I choose Aerial Olympics because it's mine? Yes, you can. Okay. I choose Aerial Olympics <laughs> because it's mine. <laughs> but I honestly have had such a wonderful experience at every. I love the PCS competitions. I love the USPDF competitions. I love PSO competitions. I really have never had a bad experience at competitions. Wow. I, I don't know if I'm super lucky, but I just. I'm just easygoing, I guess, but I love them all. I think it's perspective, too. I think that people could have the the two exact same experiences and have two different reactions, and I think it's your attitude that makes things just to get a little woo-woo with you. So I think that, you know, you seem to be appreciating the company and the opportunity, and 
for sure. Shit, it's just pole. So just pole. <laughs> you know, I'm so glad yeah. to hear that you're enjoying it so much and like spreading that passion to your own your own um, yeah. competition now and creating that because um, I'm taking from you that it's a lot of the people in the community that you that really keeps you in pole and aerial. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like my students should get to experience that love as well, for yeah, sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, now I'm super curious because you said you've met a lot of people. So um, I want to take it into the second part of the interview. Okay. So who is your pole crush? Oh, geez. Because I'm wondering. I have so many. I know. Well, let's divide it by two. Who's your overall pole crush? And then who maybe someone that you've met in your competitions that you just freaking love? Okay. So I was super lucky to have Charlie Wagner as one of my teachers. Oh, cool. Um, so obviously she, and she's a great friend of mine now. So she's totally a pole crush, but she's like now my friend. So she's a pole crush I get to touch, which is awesome. That's <laughs> Only appropriately. She only touches her appropriately. <laughs> I mean, maybe. She, unless she unless you don't. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. Um, the very first, as a pole baby, I YouTubing pole videos, I saw Michelle Stanek. Cool. And as a dancer myself, I absolutely fell in love with her and her style and the way she moves and all of that. And she's judged me at the USPDF competition before. And she was kind of the one that I was like, Oh, hi, duh, stutter. No, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, so she's like probably my pole super crush. Um, and I would probably still be embarrassed if I talked to her. So if she listens to this, I'm going to blush. I'm just blushing right now. Oh yes. You are <laughs> a little rosy. Well, that's good because you know, we always have to have those people that we look up to and that kind of keep us on our toes. Yeah. Um, and who else? So many. I love Michelle Minx. I love... I love Michelle Minx. She's the best. She's another one that's done amazing things for um, smaller cities, you know, that yeah. kind of created a pole community of her own. So you guys have a lot in common in that respect. Right. She, absolutely. And she stands up for what she believes and she fights for what she wants. And I think that's so incredible mm -hmm. in in a sport or an art form that isn't always accepted. Yeah, completely. Who else? I know. <laughs> it's hard. It's like you can Anna go a. on, but. Yeah, so many. Um, I really love a lot of male pole dancers because I feel like it's harder for them and yeah. easier for them and harder for them. Um, and they have to work hard to prove themselves and all of that. So that's wonderful, too. And Yeah, that's nice that you have, like, a program there that supports that. I mean, I think they're taking it. You're right, because sometimes it's like, oh, they could just deadlift. Like, the right. hell, that's not fair. But then it's like, do you know how much more they have to struggle to get acceptance right. as well? Right. So, you know, we yeah. support them all. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. That's a good list. Anyone else you want to add or you feel like you, you covered it? Oh, my gosh. Jordan Kensley is amazing. She, I've watched her, like, grow from this, like, whole – I watched her from when she was more contemporary, and now she's this, like, sexy bombshell beast, and she's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. Lindsay Lythe is amazing. They're all – I could just – all of them. Yeah, yeah. I, I could pick something about everybody, I'm sure. I know. I just like asking that question – a, just because I'm curious, but B, for people who are listening that are maybe newer just to discover new pole dancers and right. just to realize, like, how unique they all are and what different styles and accomplishments they bring to the table. So that was a good array right there. Thank you. Yeah. So um, how would you like to see the pole community evolve over the next five years? Oh, I would love to just continue to see it grow and become more all inclusive and more, um, defined with those niches, niches, I mean, um, but not defined and separated, defined and appreciated. Yeah. So I, it's pretty rare, but you occasionally will see like the battles between on like stripper polling and athletic polling. Yeah. And this is the right kind of poll. No, this is the right kind of poll. 
And while I love and appreciate both of them, why can't we just all do all of it? I know. I'm so over love that. It. I'm, I'm over that. I think we just need to collectively be over that and just like not respond. <laughs> Right. Yeah, totally. Although it's hard, uh, you're like, I need to stand up for what's right or, you know, but. Right. So I would just love to see like all of that be accepted and appreciated and nurtured and grown. Um, I've got men in my exotic division this year. And I just think that's the most fabulous thing that has ever happened. And I just want that to continue and be more nurtured and, and grown. Yeah. Can we talk about your kids program real quick? Because Love to. Okay. I should have asked this earlier when we were on it, but I think I got sidetracked and there was like a shiny object or something. But I, I meant to ask about that because I don't think we've really talked to anyone with like a developed kids program. What does that entail? Like, what are the ages? What, like, what do you have to, how do you have to market that? And like, what, what are you finding? Like, what are these kids like? <laughs> what, what are they getting from it? Like, <laughs> So the kids program has been, um, as you can imagine, a little bit experimental, yeah. but totally successful. We start them as young as three. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then about the age 12, they prefer to start taking the fitness classes with the adults oh, um, wow. and, and learning. We've got some, I think I've had 14 year olds that still prefer the kids program and that's totally fine too. Yeah. So the younger they are, we teach them like basic mounts in the lira and the hammock and we teach them how to climb a silk and we'll let them spin around the poles and basic body awareness, super basic dance moves, um, just familiarity and safety on these apparatuses. Yeah. And then there's a little program where they get to do their tricks and at the end of the term. Um, and then the older they get, we teach them a little bit more um, advanced and more safety and different types of mounts and poses and shorter combos and things like that. Yeah, I feel like at some point there's going to have to be like a teen program, right? Because it's like, well, they may want to practice more on the pole and they're above the kids, but like you're not ready for that adult erotic yet. Type right. Of thing, so. so with our, um, with that, the exotic classes, you have to be 18 to go to. Okay. Got so it. that's kind of how we manage that. Okay, um, that makes sense. So the teens can go to the fitness classes and um, we have. We have like pole art classes as well, where you'll learn choreography and combos and things like that. So that would be the next step for them. Oh my gosh, you have so many classes. You really do do everything. And I feel like that's not right for all studios. Like you have- No, yeah, for sure. Studios need to just focus on what like their thing, but it sounds like right. you've been able to pull that off. Yeah, and I've been really lucky. I have such an amazing staff. I've got yeah. 20 instructors and staff that oh, work with wow. me. Um, so I, I've been really lucky to help have all these people help me develop these programs. It's definitely not solely me. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, being a good boss and a good manager, that's harder said than done. So obviously you're very good at, at that because some people could have just devastated everything despite all the talent underneath them. So give yourself some credit. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yes, you're welcome. Um, did I get everything coming up? We have, I'm going to put all your social media awesome. in, in, the, uh, in the show notes. And we, ha oh, when, I didn't say, when is Aerial Olympics? It's the first weekend of July? Yeah, it's July 1 and 2. Okay. And so do you do like a live stream or videos or anything if people want to check it out? We will be on Facebook Live and probably on Instagram, but we won't be doing a full live stream, but we will have videos after the fact. Okay, that's awesome. Because so if people are maybe, you know, too late to sign up this year, but they're like, wow, I want to go. This is what I think about these competitions and these shows. And the competitions, I think, are oftentimes easier to get into than performances. Right. Since there's all different levels. I think it's a great opportunity for us as adults to travel and, like, do, like, these pole vacation type things. Yes. You know, like sometimes like, well, I've never been to Utah. Why the fuck would I go to Utah? Other than that, it's like beautiful and people love Salt Lake City. But now it's like, oh, I want to go this date because yes. this is happening. Either I want to perform yes. or at least I want to watch it or something. So I think these emerging competitions all over are just cool that it like gives you an excuse to travel. 
Right. And then you can take awesome classes at all the awesome studios we have here and learn badass shit. So. Yeah. Do you do like workshops and stuff during the weekend? Or? Yeah, wow. definitely. Uh, Lindsay Leith was actually our all-star winner last year. Oh, cool. So she'll be back. I'm going to plug her right you quick. love Lindsay. <laughs> she's so been she's a past guest on the podcast if anyone wants to go into the archives and check it out. Yes, do it. <laughs> so she'll be judging and teaching workshops the weekend. And then we'll have classes and we'll we'll offer some special stuff during the weekend as well. Yeah, that's cool. That's why I love these like show competition weekends thing because – I mean, I like going and sitting on a beach as much as the next person, but sometimes, you know, it's cool to, to take some time off and take a long weekend and see a different city that you may otherwise yeah. not, not have a reason to. So Right. Yes, totally. Okay, so we're putting that in the show notes. I'm going to put a link to your right. studio so people can check it out. Awesome. Anything else coming up that I missed? I think we got it. Okay. I think, yeah. Awesome. So before I let you go, is can we have you sign off with some type of like empowering message or story or? Yeah, okay. for sure. So my studio has um, a little motto and it is hashtag I do it for me. Oh, cool. So yeah, so all of our tank tops and all of our uh, merchandise has that on there. So I think that's really important to remember why you're doing this. Do this for you. And also, um, enjoy the journey and be where your feet are. Just enjoy your process. Don't compare yourself to the pole star next door or your pole buddy or just be where you are. Yeah, that's great advice. Sometimes we forget that, but just be where your feet are. Be present. Be Yes. En en enjoy the journey, as, as people often say. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, that's what matters as opposed to the end point. Cause you know, we all know you're going to get first place sometime, but I love that you're enjoying <laughs> yourself at third right now. Right. <laughs> you live that. So you're that's pretty. right. <laughs> awesome. Well, Shay, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's been so interesting talking with you and like figuring out what goes on behind, you know, you people who are, who do this for your life and how, you know, much, you've accomplished it's really impressive and so I'm oh, just so excited so to yeah I'm excited to see where else you take things thank you and thank you so much for having me I'm so honored to be on your show oh you're welcome bye thank you for listening to the pole parlor podcast want more visit poleparlor.com for show notes and to link to the Facebook group where you can connect with other poleaholics and continue the conversation Listen to past episodes and subscribe to new episodes on the website, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud. Lots of love, babes. Thanks for listening.